This is experiment number two of PH4454, the properties of simple piezoelectric vibrators. In this experiment, you're going to use the same impedance analyzer that you used in the first experiment to analyze the electrical properties of various piezoceramic elements. So we've got cylinders that are radially polarized, we've got disks, and we have bars. We'll begin by configuring our impedance analyzer. So we'll start with save recall, and I'm going to recall state number 5, which is the same one we used for the first experiment. We'll go back to the main menu, and under impedance measurement, for the upper plot, I'm going to pick Z. For the lower one, I'm going to pick the complex admittance, which is Y. So we'll go ahead and hook up our piezoceramic element, noticing that one side of it has a plus on it, showing the polarity. So I'm going to hook the other side up to the minus. And this side up to the high. And I'm going to change my start frequency to 5 kilohertz and my stop frequency to 250 kilohertz. Trigger, single. And once the sweep is done, I'll do an auto scale by hitting scale and clicking auto scale all. So here you can see the impedance curve and the complex admittance curve. So looking more closely at our plot for this sample bar, we see that for the impedance, we have a peak right here and we have a peak right here. This is our first peak and this is our second peak. So the strongest peak right here, I can find it by using the marker search and just hitting maximum. So the maximum there is 92.5875 kilohertz. And then I can find the first maximum here right at about 20.377 kilohertz. On the admittance plot, I'm going to also do a marker search, look for a maximum. And so this peak right here is at 76.6625 kilohertz. And we've also got a very small peak right here at 18.698 kilohertz and a peak right here at 73.715 kilohertz. So obviously to get better data around this first impedance peak, we can do a narrower sweep. So this is, peak is at 20 kilohertz, so I'm going to pick a start frequency of 19 kilohertz and a stop frequency of 21 kilohertz and I'll go ahead and do a single sweep. And once the sweep is done I'll go ahead and do auto scale all. So here is our first impedance peak. I'll do a marker search maximum and there we go. So we're at 20.09 kilohertz. So F sub N occurs at the impedance max, or Z max, which in this case is 20.09 kilohertz. And then switching to the admittance curve, we'll look for the peak. 
and that is our F sub M, which is at 19.11 kilohertz. We can now switch the analyzer over to measure conductance and resistance. So conductance is G, which we will do on the upper plot, and then resistance is R, which we'll do on the lower plot. So let's go ahead and do a single sweep. And we'll do an auto scale. We see that the frequency of maximum conductance, which is F sub S, occurs at right here at 19.11 kilohertz. If we switch to the other plot and look for the maximum, we see that that occurs at 20.09 kilohertz, which is our frequency F sub P. In order to measure the free capacitance or parallel capacitance at low frequency, we're going to switch the analyzer to measure C sub P and D. So we're going to go to measure, and for the top trace, we're going to pick C sub P. And for the bottom trace, we'll scroll down a little and pick D. And then the frequency range we're going to use is uh, from 0.05 of F sub R to 0.5 of F sub R. So in this case, with F sub R being around 19 or 20 kilohertz, we're going to sweep from 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. So we'll set the start to 1 kilohertz and the stop to 10 kilohertz and do a single sweep. And now we'll do an auto scale. And using the marker, we'll look at the data for the upper trace. And while it looks like it varies a lot, it's actually averaging around 695 picofarads, which is right about here, plus or minus. 10, 15 picofarads. That's a variation of only about 2%, which isn't really bad for experimental purposes. Another measurement that you'll want to make is to determine the blocked and motional capacitances, C sub 0 and C sub M. In this case, we're going to use the equivalent circuit analysis feature of this analyzer. So you're going to measure admittance, Y, and phase, theta, versus frequency with an appropriate frequency range. And so by appropriate, for this particular case with a resonance of 19 to, between 19 and 20 kilohertz, I'm going to do a sweep from 15 kilohertz to 25 kilohertz. So First of all, let's change our measurement for the top trace back to Y, and for the bottom trace, phase. And then I'm going to change the start to 15 kilohertz, the stop to 25 kilohertz, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a single sweep. And now let's do our auto scale. So there's Y and theta. So in order to do the equivalent circuit, 
under analysis, I'm going to pick equivalent circuit, and I need to make sure that I pick the correct circuit. In this case, it's E. And I'll hit calculate. And so here are the values for R1, C1, L1, and C0. If I turn the display on, it'll show the actual circuit here with the components and their values. And if I turn simulate on, it overlays a plot of the simulated circuit. Now in this case, it's so close that you actually can't see the overlay on top of it. If I go to display, and let's say we highlight the upper trace, and right here where it says display, I'll click on that and I get the choice of showing the data, or if I go back, memory. And memory, you see, is a slightly dimmer trace. That is the equivalent circuit plot. And as you can see, it's so close that they're really, it's really a perfect fit. And the same holds true for the phase plot. If I show just the memory, which, which is the equivalent circuit plot, which is dimmer, you can see that it's really exactly the same. Now I'm going to measure G, which is conductance, and B, which is susceptance. So on the lower plot, I'm going to switch over to B. And we'll go ahead and do a single sweep. And we'll auto scale. What we really want to do with this data is do a circle plot. So rather than plotting G versus frequency and B versus frequency, we're going to plot G versus B. So in order to get the best data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to center the sweep right at this peak, which occurs at 19.11 kilohertz. So I'm going to hit center, 19.11 kilohertz. And span, I'm going to do 500 hertz. And auto scale. Now, unfortunately, all the newer analyzers are no longer capable of doing these circle plots. So instead we have an Excel macro which will extract the data from the analyzer and give you a circle plot. So here's our Excel macro for getting the data off of the Agilent analyzer. So all I have to do is hit run macro, get data, now I can end the macro. And so here's my two columns of data for G and B. If we go back to the original page, we see a note here that says control plus shift plus C gives X versus Y circle plot. So let's go back to our data. And I'm going to do control shift C. And there's our circle plot.